Five years ago, Linda Piston set out to achieve two goals in her life, end world hunger and improve science education in public schools. To that end, she took classes at the University of Virginia this summer. And in August, she added to her accomplishments by becoming a published author. All this at the age of 11. Linda Piston joins us now. Linda, I want to talk about your book in a little bit, but first I want to talk a little bit more about you. You live in Northern Virginia, or just outside Washington. You were studying Chinese this summer, is that right, at the University yes. of Virginia? Yes. You've done a lot of things a lot of 10-year-olds haven't done. Have you always done things, you always remember doing things that other kids your age might not necessarily be doing? Well, most 10-year-olds haven't published a book, and also most... Uh, Five-year-olds haven't started a business at that point, and I actually taught myself to read when I was just four. You started a business when you were five. Yes, my business is called Linda's Lab, and it has two main goals. One, to solve world hunger, and the other one, to improve science education in schools. And how do you do those things? Well, I am solving world hunger through mealworm protein, because I turn the mealworms into a protein powder that I can then put into protein bars. And once I make them shelf stable by working with a production company, I can distribute them worldwide. And I also have the larva library, which lends mealworm tanks to schools so that classrooms can see the life cycle. I just love to teach people about science through my social media. And I also am doing it through my free read alouds that I do in classrooms and schools. I know you've said that you want to be an undergraduate at UVA uh, by the time you're 14, and you want to yes. study astrophysics. Yes. How did you get interested in astrophysics? I always loved chemistry, and then I also loved physics and mathematics and astronomy, and all those things combined is astrophysics. So for years I was searching for, like, which one I liked the most once I heard about astrophysics. I realized, wait, hold on, this is actually the perfect option because I can get everything I love into one thing. So now I just, I love to do astrophysics experiments. I love to go out to the dark sky park near me, uh, Sky Meadow State Park, and I love to look at the night sky when they have like a special night where you just, everybody brings down their telescopes and they do a presentation. We should also point out that not only have you been taking classes at the University of Virginia, but you go at 11 to a high school, to a science high school. Yes. Uh, an elementary school. What grades did you skip? Uh, I skipped first, third, and fifth grade. After you graduate from uh, University of Virginia with your degree in astrophysics, you want to go to Caltech. Yes. And work for NASA. And what do you want to do for NASA? So I want to be an astronaut. Physicist and so for NASA, I want to work at the Jet Propulsion Lab at Caltech. I would also love to be the first person to go to Mars, and I feel like it could be very valuable and maybe even bring mealworms to space because mealworms can be used to solve many world problems. And I'm just kind of curious to see how they can like live if they can live in space in zero gravity. Let's turn to your book now. It's called Linda and the Mysterious Footprints. Yes. Tell me, how did you get this idea, and how did you decide to write a book about it? So when I was six, I was studying carbon emissions, like all six-year-olds do. And I heard the term carbon footprint. And I thought it was really funny because I was picturing actual footprints. And so that small picture helped me understand a really big idea. So I wrote it down. And I made myself the main character because I wanted to live in a world where a little girl scientist can see a problem and be respected and heard. That is the world I want to live in. I think you're living in it, quite frankly. Yeah. Linda, in the book, actually sees black footprints. Yes. And, and tries to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And how does she do that? What's the, what's the technique or the method she uses to do that? So she uses the scientific method, which in my opinion is one of the most important parts of all of STEM. The scientific method, basically, it's used for when people do experiments. First you ask a question, then you research, then you form a hypothesis, to, and like the hypothesis are very important because also it can show you how you can learn from if you make a mistake. It also it can help you with future things when you might not be able to test it because some of parts about science are just as making educated guesses, and that's basically what a hypothesis is. And so then you experiment, and then you do, 
form a conclusion. So all these things that you do, all these accomplishments you've had, uh, going to U uh, high school, going to UVA, but still you're an 11-year-old girl. What do you do in your spare time? What do you like to do when you're not doing all these things? So I love to be outdoors. I love to go camping with my scout troop, but I also love taking care of my business, Linda's Lab, and that takes up a lot of my free time, but it's one of the most fun things I do. I understand you have two brothers who are also pretty smart, right? Yes. Is there a little rivalry? Occasionally. <laughs> my mom likes to say, uh, me and my little brother, Thomas, who's six years old, are so similar. We both want to go and be the first person on Mars. So So you're racing to see who's going to yeah, get there. Basically. And so it's going to be definitely interesting to see which one of us gets on Mars first. I'm definitely hoping it's going to be me. Yeah. Last question I want to ask you is that I understand your name, Linda, yeah. is very special in your family. Tell us about yeah. that. So my grandmother was uh, named Linda, like me. My mom tells me she was really nice. She was unfortunately killed uh, by the DC snipers before I was born, so I never actually got to meet her. But she was a math and science teacher and loved math and science, just like me. And she'd probably be very excited and very proud of what you're doing now. Yes. Linda Piston, thank you very much. You're welcome. So nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Thank you very much.